The year 1986 brought us many beautiful, beautiful things, such as Top Gun, shoulder pads, the Challenger exploding, Chernobyl exploding, and who could forget the Oprah Winfrey show. But another momentous event occurred in this year that a lot of people don't know about, an event that would shake the engineering foundations to its core. This event was caused by a man named Chuck Hull, who patented the, uh, uh, excuse me, the apparatus for production of three-dimensional objects by stereolithography, or as it is more commonly known today, the 3D printer. So before I can create anything, I have to design it first. And many engineers use a whole bunch of different design software and 3D modeling things that help them create something before they physically make it. Uh, there's Fusion 360, which is very popular, but personally I use SolidWorks, which is this program, uh, because I have experience with it and it comes free through my school, so that's definitely a plus. So in SOLIDWORKS, not only can you module individual pieces and parts, but you can create assemblies where all these parts fit together like pieces to a puzzle. So how this 3D printer works is pretty simple. You have this spool of filament that'll sit on the top here that will thread filament through this channel, which goes all the way down here to the extruder, where it goes through this little pipe and then through the magic of engineering, gets melted down and oozed through that tip right there. So for this 3D printer to operate correctly, this tip needs to access anything on a 5 by 5 by 10 square cube. So to do this, I use these stepper motors. Um, oh, also to note, so everything electronically, like the motors, the, uh, the buttons, the switches, the screens, and even like the, uh, the nuts and bolts, I didn't design any of that because those are parts I'm gonna be purchasing. I downloaded 3D models of that and then everything else mechanically, like this top sheet here or these acrylic parts that are cut out here, uh, I designed those to fit around all the nuts and bolts and electronics. So there we go, but uh, where was I? Oh yes, so these stepper motors control the axis of movement. So this bottom plate right here can move back and forth. And then these two motors right here and here, uh, yeah, right here and here uh, can move this chassis, chassis? whatever you call it, in this like movement type here. So with these four motors, uh, that, that extruder tip can access any point to be able to print anything that fits within a five by five by like 10 inch cube or whatever. I haven't done the measurements, though I probably should if I'm designing this thing. So this took a lot of work and that's not even half of it. And though hypothetically this all should work perfectly because all the pieces fit perfectly and snugly in this uh, simulation, in real life when I start making these parts, it's probably not going to be like that. I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll be great, uh, but also maybe not. <sighs> so now that it's designed, we have to create these things from our loins. So, my little Frankenstein of, of wires and weird connections and all these things is kind of coming together, but I'm terrified that it is probably not going to work. I'll show you. And here she is. So, I'm not done with the wiring yet. It's uh, very chaotic, as you can see here. Let me just give you a bird's eye view. This little beauty is the brains of the operation. And it is cased in cardboard, which is probably not a very smart thing to have something flammable next to something that is covered in wires. 
that aren't even very well insulated. Like a lot of my wiring here, you'll see, that's uh, blurry is what it is. But also, it's just hot glue that's holding a lot of this together, which insulates wires, but also hot glue can melt. And also things can explode. Probably not, but I could get electrocuted, but probably not. So, I won't know if any of this even works unless I get all the wiring done and turn it on, so... <sighs> it has been completed. It's almost like this video has taken six months to make because I keep on running into problems making this thing. <laughs> anyway, this is the uh, beautiful work of passion. So, uh, for anyone who works in the engineering field sees this, knows that this is clearly the work of a mechanical engineer and not an electrical one. Because though everything mechanically is sound, everything moves the way it should, uh, the electrical components, and by that I mean the wires and literally everything else, is a hot pile of dog doo-doo. Case in point, the little housing that holds the, the motherboard, I guess, for the Arduino for this whole thing, is a little piece of cardboard, which, yes, is flammable. Is a lot of the wiring insulated? No. Stop with your nasty little questions, all right? So though it doesn't look pretty, and it isn't entirely functional, it is functional. And it was cool to see how every piece that I designed in a virtual space, I was able to manufacture with different tools. The top sheet out of metal, that was a uh, plasma cut out of a plasma cutter. I gave it this file and it cut out the profile for the metal pieces. I had to bend them. And it was sort of the same thing for the acrylic parts here, where all these motors sort of move. That was cut out with a laser cutter, which is a little bit of a different process. Now, while making this, I encountered a lot of problems, like a lot, I did not, anticipate. One was that when printing the the bed of the 3D printer, the platform it prints on, has to be perfectly level with the nozzle that's printing the filament. If it's off by even the like the thickness of a piece of paper, it could completely ruin the print. Imagine it like a house of playing cards. If one of the cards at the base is not perfectly aligned, then everything crumbles. So what a lot of more expensive 3D printers do is they have the bed that is heated to a certain temperature that makes the plastic stick to it more. They also have auto-leveling uh, sensors and sort of programs that make the bed exactly level to how you need it to be. But uh, I haven't got any of that fancy stuff, so what they ended up doing is creating this very crude, rudimentary, like, bed leveling thing. So, basically, I laser cut this little corner of plastic which sits on the bed right here and then I was able to 3D print a few leveling screws like these. Now it doesn't look like your typical screw because it has like only two threads but how it works is that the bed or the plate sits on the bed and then the screw screws into other 3D printed sort of mounts and then you can adjust the screws to adjust the height of the bed. And if you do that with all four corners, and you take a lot of time and effort into it, you can make the thing perfectly level to your print space. But that was only one of the, of the many, many problems I encountered. Another one was that I noticed my prints kept on shifting, which means that as the print grew taller and taller, it's almost like it was sort of teetering to one side. And I didn't know what was happening. I thought it was the problem with the code, the program. I went through like hundreds of lines of Arduino code, but I figured out that the problem was simply that the belts, which move the axis of the, the 3D printer, weren't tight enough. You see, these belts have to be a certain level of tightness so that there's no wobble. Everything has to be exactly precise for the nozzle of the 3D printer to be where it needs to be. That every uh, screw, every bolt, the bed, every motor has to be aligned perfectly. And that especially includes the belts. Those are just a few of the many problems I encountered when making this, but at the end of the day, I was able to make a machine that can make other things, and it was really cool. Uh, I actually made a few... <clears throat> I think what I've learned the most from this, this process is that um, all the tools 
I think the most important thing that I've learned from this, this process is the most important tool or skill to have when creating or designing anything, it isn't how well you can simulate objects, it's not how well you can 3D model them in a virtual space, or even to physically make and cut out the parts. It's the creativity you need to have to overcome problems and to identify where they start, right? Like when I started with this, when I encountered a problem, I would go to Google and I would try to find people with similar problems, but over time I was able to understand where the problem occurred and find a creative solution to overcome it. Case in point, if I chose not to create this bed that I could auto level with these screws, then the next option I was going to go with was to have to remove this bed entirely and reprint and realign all the acrylic parts, which would have taken a lot more time, would have been more expensive because I had to cut out more parts, but it was this simple little guy that was able to more or less fix the problem. So the uh, ironic thing is that I spent entirety of last summer and like all this winter like making and refining this machine that in the meantime I got tired and uh, I got a Ender 3 Pro for Christmas which is like a professional quality 3D printer so this thing is now kind of obsolete. Um, so now that I have a big boy 3D printer I need inspiration on what to make, on what to design or create or things that other people have designed that I can print myself. So if you could give me some suggestions that would be much appreciated. Uh,